Welcome back to the campus, the University of Alaska Anchorage in the Avis Alaska Sports Complex. Matt Nebula here with UA coach Matt Shazby. As we have another game to go tonight, the Seawolves and the Nanooks. Uh, I was reminded last night that we are definitely in the entertainment business because Mom Shazby told me, gave me a nice compliment on how much fun she has listening to our broadcast, which just reminded me of, you know, that this is supposed to be fun. Unfortunately, you guys have been having a whole bunch of fun. How do you kind of rationalize kind of these last two games, especially in the last little bit of a scoring rut that you're in? Yeah, I mean, from day one, the message is winning isn't the end all be all. It's the experience. It's you're a part of something at a university while you're earning a degree. Um, and then you get to play hockey on the side. So uh, there, there's bigger things in the world, and, and you can't determine how, what your mood is based on wins and losses. And as long as our guys get up and they, they're good people in our community, and that's all I can ask for. You know, I use the word intriguing on a lot of these broadcasts when we open them up and all this sort of thing. And I'm intrigued by this idea. This team can show up in Wisconsin and pull off a, a quote-unquote miracle win, go to Penn State, do the same, and then kind of come home and, for lack of a better phrase, kind of lay an egg yeah. You know, what entertainment value in is, is there in that, if any? Well, I mean, if, if you really break down last night's game, they get a power play goal off of a penalty that shouldn't have been a penalty. Um, the goal that they do score is a one-timer that goes through our defenseman's five-hole, goes through our goalie's five-hole, so the game's 1-0. The second goal was a misplay by our breakout, and the puck just gets back to the front of our net. Weller kicks it out, goes off our own guy and in. So they really got every break and every bounce last night. And then the other goals were just, you know, not typical goals that Whaler gives up. But our biggest issue right now is, is us scoring and building some momentum throughout a game and and just kind of feeling that feeling again of, of happiness, of putting the seeing the puck go in. You know, there's there's whether it's pro hockey, the unfortunate thing about college hockey, you play such few games. Mm -hmm. If you go in a four or five game drought, um, you know, you're gonna find yourself on the wrong end of too many games and it's hard to recover. To find that scoring spark, it's desperately needed. Kind of what lineup changes will we see both in goal and out on the, on the ice tonight? Yeah, Whaler will be back in. You know, he deserves that opportunity to, to try and get one back here. And, you know, it's we're going to let some guys play tonight that haven't played very much this year, but it's more just you should be fresh, bring some energy. Uh, the guys that have been through this 10-week grind, have you, know, you can kind of see it. Um, it's it's hard to get emotionally up for these games because there are so, is so much writing for, on each game. So we're hoping uh, they bring a spark to some new guys to the lineup. You'll be calling some new names tonight, and it should be fun. I'll try to do my best. This is the last meeting before the holiday break. Your holiday message to these people have continued to support this program through this two-year adventure. Yeah, it's been great. You know, the building was packed last night. It would have been nice to get them up out of their seats one time, but uh, – you know, we're heading in the right direction. We're, we were as high as we've ever been in the pairwise throughout the year. We're knocking off some big teams and just continue to show up and support these kids, and we'll continue to put good athletes on the ice. Thanks, Matt. Nanooks, Seawolves coming up next. Create a backyard that's out of this world. Right now, get a free carrying case, chain, and hat with the purchase of Select Steel Chainsaws. Real steel. Find yours. Ladies, at, uh, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we please ask you to rise and remove your hats for the singing of our Alaska flag song. The Alaska, Alaska flag song will be sung by the Alaska Sound Celebration.
Thank you. To the Alaska Celebration. We ask you please remain standing for the singing of our national anthem. Performed tonight by Lifelong Alaskan and music teacher at Ocean View Elementary and Northwood Elementary. Alaska Tyler Desjardins. Thank you, Tyler. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we'd also like to direct your attention to Center Ice, where House Speaker Representative Kathy Tilton will be leading us in the ceremonial puck drop. Thank you, House Speaker. Thank you, Representative Kathy Tilton, and thank you to Alaska Airlines for sponsoring tonight's Alaska Airlines Governor's Cup. Overly worked up, not be, you know, I, uh, you know losing sleep, even though Matt did joke he they did. didn't get much sleep <laughs> last night because polar bears were chasing him in his nightmares, but I think he was being a little facetious as he's known to be. But at the same time, uh, you know, uh, if they can cut down on the power play opportunities for Fairbanks, which uh, which the Nanooks hit on a couple of times last night, Jared Will made up made a couple of plays characteristically he does not make, and uh, you know, but right now for you, a you just want to make scoring a goal and getting that kind of that albatross gone for right away would be a plus at least give you something to feel good about, which I think what everyone in this building. Who cares about the team in their lovely gold unis cares about? Baby steps. Baby steps indeed. Baby steps. Well, Matt has made, I, I have to stop short of saying wholesale changes, but uh, it's pretty doggone close. Six new faces in the lineup from last night. And the starting line tonight, Mitch LaFay making his first career not only start at left wing, but playing in his first NCAA well, that, game. That kind of plays that good mood that they're in, if for lack of a better phrase, good or, or you know, kind of roll with it mood. They, they made wholesale changes. We've said six different players in uniform tonight. Some players are getting their first real taste. This is an opposing starting line if you're thinking about from a quote-unquote enforcer type of style, guys at 6'6", six, six, at 6'5", six, and LaFay and Anderson, so... You know, but I, but I would say the Seals are going to play this game pressure-free, believe it or not. 
And that's the best way to play it. So we are underway. Ten seconds have elapsed, and the puck right now is on its way out of the Nanook zone. Carried ahead two on one right off the bat for the Nanooks. Pass goes through the top of the blue paint, and the second shot in on Jared Whale. He'll swallow that up in the Seawolf on his chest. Shot there coming off the stick of Braden Bernie right off the hop. But yeah, like you were saying, 6'5", Ben Anderson, 6'6", six, six, Mitch LaFay. They dwarf their center, Matt Kanash, who rolls in at only six foot, so. Should be a fun line to watch tonight. Puck chipped up, not out. Centering feed for Rupstov, save made there by Whale. And now it's Helgeson, couldn't handle it cleanly, but the puck does leave the zone. That'll give William Gilson a chance to set up the breakout. Gilson still with it behind his net. Not see many options. Now it's Huffman looking to play a whole game tonight, not just half. Puck's in all the way down. The nice it off. waved off. Huh. Interesting. And now right back the other way. Here's Rubstoff. Shot nice save made by the left pad of Jared Whale. And now it's Gilson. Up the left wing side, Gilson still with it, sends one towards the front of the net, goes wide. Nanox forced to curl back, Cade Nielsen with it on his stick, he gives off. And Connor Merritt steps in to knock that puck free, at least momentarily. Then the puck is chipped out, that's gonna roll all the way down. Icing will be waved at the last second as Johnny Sorensen hustled down to win the race. Back to the point it goes. Sent deeper into the zone by McCauley. Goes around behind the Seawolf nice. net. And UAA once again comes the other way with Almquist. He gives off to Merritt, who goes back to Almquist. Puck rolls around behind the Nanooks net. Kozabud pinches in. Throws it in there a little bit deeper. Comes out on Bamber's stick. Tried to knock it ahead, but it's cut off. And right back the other way is Sorensen. His shot is deflected into the protective netting by Jared Whale, and we'll have a face-off here in the Seawolf end with 17.54 to play in our first period. Well, you've already seen it here where UF's got a couple odd man chances going early, which suggests maybe Anchorage is willing to be a little looser, you know, and, and, and kind of, a, hey, Jared, you're going to have to make some big plays on your own. Maybe we're going to try to press it offensively a little more than we did, even though we're not a, much of an offensively-minded squad. You know, take a couple of risks, a couple of chances. Why not at this point? Exactly, exactly. Puck chipped ahead. Adam Tisdale trying to catch up to it. Beaten to it there by Dawson Bruneski. Dawson throws it back behind the net looking for Xavier Jean-Louis. That's sent up the wall. Tisdale had it cut off and keeps it alive in the zone for the Seawolves. Pierre Charleston out of his net to play it around. And Fairbanks is back out into the neutral zone. Ahead with it is Jean-Louis. And that one again is steered up. Oh, that was actually steered up into the glove of Jared Whale. And the faceoff will stay in the Seawolf end. 17-19 left here in our first period. Only two changes tonight for Fairbanks, Xavier Jean-Louis, who we just saw, and Kate Ehrenholtz, both in the lineup tonight for the Nanook. So not much to change if you're Eric Largen. Puck tied up on that half wall. William Gilson's going to find it behind his own net. Tries to get it out. TJ Lloyd swats it deeper into the zone. Scrum of four behind that Seawolf net. Caleb Huffman. Couldn't contain it. Matt Kanash trying to dig that free behind the net, but it's back up to the point. Kept alive by McDonald. Backhanded deeper into the zone by the Nanooks. Cade Ehrenholtz working down low. Loses it for a moment. Nanooks can't clear, or Seawolf, excuse me, can't clear the zone. And we've got a penalty, and that is going to go on. Is that Matt Kanash? No, it's going to go on Fairbanks. A roughing call, I believe, going on. It's going to be Anton Rubstov and a boarding call. Boarding call. So Kind of a quiet boarding call. Very, yeah. So at 325 of period number one, UAA will get their first power play opportunity as Rubstov 
goes into the box, two for boarding. Off the draw, Bamber has it for the Seawolves. Gives off to Helgeson. Helgeson in that left corner. Backhand shot save made by Pierce Charleston. Sorry, a little change of pace from last evening as UA is getting that first power play opportunity where last night it was UAF and using that brilliant first power play goal to jump off and kind of set the tone. Again, I'm going to approach this as UA is not putting any pressure on itself, so let's not do it ourselves. So just kind of kind of just see how this chapter let's is unfolded. Let's just have some fun. Off the draw, Gilson goes to Helgeson in the left circle. Helgeson goes down low with it. Backhand attempt by, there by Shackle. Second time he's tried that. Back to the point, Bamber. Skates the line. Helgeson lets it go. Oh. Shot goes wild, or the sh rebound is kicked out is what I wanted to say by Charleston. And the puck back to the point, Bamber. Goes back down low with it to Gilson. Trying to stuff it out in front was Riley Thompson. Charleston with the save. Yeah, they're going to even up. Got a penalty coming up here. Is want to say that was. We've got a tripping call coming up. We'll just say that. I think it's going to be Max. I think it is going to be Max Helgeson. Or a hooking call. Either way. Max got caught behind two men and really couldn't fight through that. So he just kind of kept trying to fight it and got that stick wrapped around. Boy, that is. That was a, a little, little phantom, phantom tag there. Yeah. I mean, his stick was definitely up, but it was with the guy who didn't fall down, not the guy who did. Yeah. But here we go. Is that Matsui? Just thought I'd ask. <laughs> Matsui's got a knack for acting. I saw that last night in the Caleb Huffman major penalty incident when it wouldn't replay showed it wasn't quite as nihilistic yeah. as it may have seemed and that right there was I mean somehow the officials Matsui though, could have thought it could have been his home opponent stick and he could have fallen like that somehow the officials Here. thought it was pretty egregious though so we skate four on four puck is back into the neutral zone controlled by the Nanix Dawson Bruneski forced back behind his own net leaves off down there for TJ Lloyd Lloyd will start up the right wing side and then curl back as he's forced by Matt Allen. Allen, another one of those faces that's in the lineup tonight that wasn't last night. Bruneski goes cross ice with it. Now it's Sorensen. He's forced to pull back as his line mate had jumped in off sides. Caleb Huffman steals it. He takes a hit. And walking in, shot save made on the attempt by Matt Allen. That was a high hit on Caleb Huffman there over right at the Seawolf bench. And uh, he's having a couple of words there for Johnny Sorensen as we look at that one. Oh, it wasn't even Sorensen oh, that hit him. He's gonna, oh, it was Sorensen that hit him. He must have said the magic words. Maybe he's 10. All right, so he said the 10. So Caleb, Caleb's ice time is taking another hit. So a 10 minute mad misconduct for saying the magic words, obviously. I will say this, the official is talking to Connor Mayer and very explicitly expressing his issues. Well, and the Seawolves weren't happy with the officiating last Bruce night because it. it was at times, uh, we'll say, questionable. And I was surprised when I talked to Aiden Weston earlier, and we'll hear that interview at the end of the first period, but he mentioned uh, the officiating a little bit as well. I got to tell you, though, I mean, when you're – in a rut, not scoring any goals, I don't care what the officials do. I mean, you just got to find a way. That that's how this game is played. This game is won and lost by scoring nothing else. No yep. matter. And, and again, that plays into what Matt was talking about with the attitude being, hey, another opportunity, let's go out and take it, as opposed to, you know, feeling like you're being sold out or, or, or smoked by somebody. Yeah, and if you're Caleb Huffman, you know, there's a lot of time left in this game. Take a number and worry about it later on. Ahead with it now are the Nanix cutting toward the net, save made by Jared Whale, and the pass back to the point is to nobody in particular, and TJ Lloyd forced all the way back into his own. I just love the idea. Caleb must have really hit the tape as a line from a slap shot. <laughs> we all know and love from back in the day. Oh, uh, yes. Everyone kind of reacted like, whoa, hey, oh. 
So Fairbanks is now on the power play as Rubstov comes out of the box. And then he quickly gets dumped in the slot area. 35 seconds left here on this man advantage. TJ Lloyd gives off to Bergmanis. Pass off the outside of the post by Brady Risk. Lloyd tries to go cross ice back to Risk, but getting a skate on that is Merritt. And Merritt in oh. shot save made by Charleston. Great hustle play there by Connor Merritt to actually create a scoring chance where there otherwise would have been none. Here's Rubstov back into the zone. Leaves off for Israels. He gets tied up on the half wall by Bamber. Pucks in all the way around, and that's going to leave the zone as well, and the penalty is over. Helgeson back on the ice. Both teams 0 for 1 here with the man advantage. Nope. Shot blocked. And the Seawolves will carry ahead. Having his pocket picked from behind was Max Osborne. Riley Thompson there to yep. help him out, though. Puck sent ahead, deflected Chaz by Matt Kanash. wanted a hook there at center ice. Kanash goes hard into that back wall, chasing the puck. And Johnny Sorensen pulls it free. Sorensen takes a hit from Ben Anderson. And Jean-Louis will put it high up in the air, swatted down with a hand by Mitch LaFay. And Xavier Jean-Louis has it on his stick for the Nanooks. Mitch LaFay steps into one of the Nanook players who sends it all the way down the ice. Icing is already waved off. Carson Kozabud, first one to it. Centering feed broken up, and the Seawolves are back out, or have the puck back out into the neutral zone, I should say. Here's Gilson now for the Seawolves. Gives off for Mitch LaFay. Couldn't handle the pass cleanly. Jean-Louis tries to carry it ahead. LaFay introduces him to the boards. And right back the other way, Gunnar Van Dam. Goes hard into the back wall. As the Nanooks look to slow things down just a little bit. Long outlet pass. Here's Matsui. Sends it deep into the Seawolf zone. And Porter Shackle has it not come off of his stick. Matt Cothy with it. Back to Lloyd. Shot goes wide of the net. McDonald picks up. Gets it deeper into the zone. TJ Lloyd steps in. He'll throw that on goal. And Jared Whale will put an end to this craziness. 9.05 gone here in our first period. We have no score. And I got to say, this first period tonight is more entertaining than what we <laughs> saw at any point last night. You know, I, I think you and I talked about last night. We're here to add fun and add levity and, and bring the game action to our to our fine uh, YouTube viewers. But also, yeah, I, we noticed that and couldn't help ourselves last night. I even told that to Shaz when I was talking to him. You know, I was kind of running out of platitudes for, for everyone involved in that last evening. It was tough. So yeah. far, Ooh. again, that the, word, the key word tonight, the buzzword is fun. Hard hit put on down in front of us by Braden Nicolette's Ooh, shot nice saved by Jared Whale. Back to the point, it's McDonald. Works his way around Matt Allen. Still with it is McDonald. Tries to center. That's blocked. And if Puck finally comes free out of the corner, sent back behind the net. Gilson picks up for the Seawolves. Goes up to Allen. And it's chipped up into the air, kept alive by the Nanooks as there's a scrum of six on this near side wall. Move it, move it. And ahead with it now will come Almquist. Gives off to Matt Allen as they hit the blue line. Almquist gets it back. Centers a pass across the front of the blue paint. Tied up down there. I believe that was Porter Shackle. Or no, that was Connor Merritt. Brady Risk turns it into the Seawolf zone. Here's a chance to carry ahead now. For Carson Kozabud, gets the puck deep in the Nanak zone, but he gets tied up down in the corner. Seawolves can't keep it alive. Here's a chance now for Brady Risk. Risk walks in off the side of the net and takes a big slash in the process. So Fairbanks is going to go back on the power play. Shot towards the front of the net. Save made, and then Bamber gets a stick on it. That'll get the whistle. And that's going to be a slash on Kozabud. Not really... I don't really think he's got much room to argue that one. That was a two-hander. Penalty comes at 9.35. 
All right. So Fairbanks power play. Faceoff will come to the right of Jared Whale. Helgeson in to take the draw against Nicolette. Pulled back by Fairbanks. Centering oh, pass. Oh, oh, boy. Getting a stick on that, I think, was Matt Kanash to end up making that not an empty net goal for the Seawolves or for the Netics. Back to McDonald. Now it's Sorensen. Tried to center as well. That hit skates in front, and then it's sent all the way down the ice. McDonald carries up now for the Nanooks. Carried in was Matsui, gives off to Sorensen. He's on the left half wall, back to the point he goes to McDonald. Pass goes across to Sorensen, shot blocked. As sacrificing his body there was Brett Bamber. And the Seawolves able to clear it out. Minute 12 to go here on the Kozabud penalty. Nine and a half left in our first period. We have no score. TJ Lloyd circles back as his line mates complete their change. Now Bergmanis works his way around Almquist. Slingshot back to Rubtsov. And Rubtsov carries into the zone, gives off to Israels. Weak shot towards the net. Jared Wales sticks that to the glass. Then no. Almquist tried to tee one up and let it fly. Ends up not getting anything on it. Bergmanis keeps it alive. Back to the point. Bergmanis again. Pass comes out, shot, saved by Jared Whale. Harrison Israels with that opportunity. TJ Lloyd, Bergmanis breaks his stick on the play, and the Seawolves will send that all the way down the ice. Bergmanis with some entertainment value in the way he threw the broken stick away. Yes. Bergmanis with his new stick carries the puck back into the Seawolves zone. Brady Risk gives off. Nice job. And the Seawolves have killed it off and a chance to carry head for Tisdale. Three on two if they hurry. Tisdale tries to work his way around. McCauley can't do so. Those two go hard into the corner together. And the puck is out to Gaffney in the neutral zone. He sends it cross corner on the dump in. Trying to chase that one down. Braden Nicoletz comes off of his stick. Now it's a chance to carry ahead for Kanash. Tries to center to Anderson, diving through the Where'd blue the paint. Go? To make that save was Braden, or uh, Broughton Sabo. And now the Nanooks trying to spring man free. Ah. And another trip coming up. That was a, looked like a pretty decent call. <laughs> I'm going to catch my breath because this game is getting crazy. We'll be back <laughs> in just a minute. Scoreless, 7.42 to go in the first. All right, so what is becoming a trend is UAA is back on the penalty kill. Matt Kanash, two for tripping at 12-18 of our first period. No score, shots on goal, read eight for the Nanooks, four for the Seawolves. Matt, Matt was near the end of that shift there and he made that offensive rush, so obviously he was didn't have much fuel left in the tank there. And the UAF player coming through the neutral zone, caught him in the hip, and he went a flying. Behind the net, back to Bergmanis at the left point. Cross eyes just keeping that in the zone was Israels. 
Israel's back down low to keep it alive to TJ Lloyd. Now it's Brigmanis straight away. TJ Lloyd, shot saved Lloyd. by Whale. No, Rebound loose. still loose, kicks back out to the point. Lloyd with it once again. Shot saved by Whale. Bergmanis gathers it in at the left point. Goes down low to Brady Risk, cross ice to Lloyd. Shot on the ice, goes wide of the net, rolls up the half wall. Bergmanis keeps it alive, gets it to Risk. Now he takes the return feed. Shot comes in, TJ Lloyd, save made by Jared Whale and then Alex Gomez. Doesn't make any mistake with that, sends it all the way down the ice. Jared Wells is going to tell you one of those saves you should have been able to control that rebound a little more in front of him that kept that play alive, but good on the Seawolves to clear the zone and make that all-important change. Johnny Sorensen rims it around behind the Seawolf net. Played deeper into the zone. Now it's back to Sorensen on the left half wall. Peyton Matsui skates the blue line. Takes a return pass, shot blocked on the way through, never made it on net. Pulled away now, it's McDonald. Gives off to Matsui. Cross ice pass, didn't sit down for Dubois. Back to McDonald. Matsui again, top of the right circle. They switch places. Mm. Downloaded Dubois. Matsui shot saved by Whale, and that rebound Wait. goes wide of the net. Jared Whale didn't know where it was after he made the initial save. Good stick there by Carson Kozabud to keep that pass from connecting. Matsui shot blocked and cleared out, and Matt Kanash is free again. So four shots on that power play for Fairbanks, but the Seawolf penalty kill up to the task once again. Braden Burney sends it deep into the Seawolf zone. Gunnar Van Dam picks it up. Sends it up the wall. Kept alive by the Nanooks, at least momentarily. Van Dam taken down on the far side. Kate Aaron Holtz over there. Pucks it around behind the Seawolf net. And gathering it in, trying to carry ahead was Bamber, had it knocked off of his stick. Aaron Holtz once again. Can't do anything with it, and the Seawolves are back through the neutral zone. Puck comes up to the point, and Xavier Jean-Louis will carry ahead, and then he'll get stapled by William Gilson. Whale out of his net. Pass goes ahead, deflected deep into the zone by Matt Allen. Oh, <laughs> that, was, that was about to be a huge hit, it looked like. <laughs> Back into the Seawolf zone, go the Natick. Shot save made by Whale. Another uncharacteristic rebound. Give yeah. it up by Jared Will there. Pucks that all the way down the ice. That will go. No, icing is waved off as Matt Johnson wins that race. Seawolves keep the puck alive, at least for the moment, in the Nanak zone. Puck chipped up over Al, or, uh, Matt Johnson. And it's sent right back into the zone by Gunnar Van Dam. Around behind the Fairbanks net it goes. Bamber, his shot. High into the air. Visits the rafters. We have a whistle. 351 left here in a honestly really entertaining first period in my opinion. You know, there's, a, there's some sloppy play being but but there's a there's a there's a different sense pace of urgency that yeah. we saw last night. Very much so. To the face off now to the left of the UAF net, manned by Pierce Charleston again tonight. And the Nanix in that one all the way down the ice. Icing will be called. And that'll bring the face off right back to where it was. Gomez in to take the draw for UAA. Pulled back. And trying to carry that one ahead was Van Dam. Puck dribbles up the wall. Bamber keeps it alive. Kanash couldn't quite catch up to that one. And then turning it right back into the zone once again is Van Dam. That hits a stick on the way. And the faceoff will come right outside of the Fairbanks blue line in front of their bench.
Linesman trying to get things sorted out before they drop the puck. Finally, they do so. And Aiden Weston pushes it forward. Helgeson carries in for the Seawolves. He's in a battle with TJ Lloyd for that puck. Back to the point it goes. Caleb Huffman tried to take a shot. He fanned on it. And he's going to go to the penalty box after he just got out of there. Actually, I might be very, what? very wrong. Yeah, I think maybe UA is going uh, to TJ Lloyd an advantage. TJ Lloyd is talking up some junk about something. So I didn't see what was called, but it is TJ Lloyd in the box here at the 16:52 mark of the first period. I might need a new red pad after tonight. Off the draw, it's pulled back. Caleb Huffman, well rested, and with it on his tape. Gives off down low to Almquist. Now it's Merritt, back to Almquist. Now it's Huffman. Almquist throws one towards the front of the net, looking for a deflection there that didn't come. Huffman. Sends it deeper into the zone for Helgeson. Max trying to send it further along. He's tied up down there. And Fairbanks finally able to pull that one free and send it all the way down the ice. Both teams making changes. And Huffman will leave off so he can do the same. And now it's Gilson behind his own net. 2.20 left here in our first period. Just over a minute left in the Seawolf power play. Porter Shackle catches up to it, tries to give that one off to Riley Thompson. Thompson and Shackle still trying to dig that one free down there. And it finally comes out to Gilson. Gilson walks in, oh. shot off the goal post. Puck comes back around to Gilson. Goes cross to Bamber. Bamber throws it down low. Thompson centering feed Shackle. Missed it the first time, got a piece of it the second time, and Pierce Charleston gloves it and holds I on. Like it. I like it, Porter. Just flip it that direction, and, and you're seeing UA do that a lot, get, just throwing things on net again. Any garbage will do if you're wearing UA green, gold, and white. 39 seconds left here in the Seawolf Man Advantage. Minute 46 left in a scoreless first period. Off the faceoff, Jean-Louis sends it around behind his net. And not able to clear the zone. At least not initially where the Nanix. The second opportunity, Brady Risk able to get it out. And Jared Whale will stop it up behind his own net for Brett Bamber. Seawolves quickly ahead. It's Shackle. Throws it off the back wall. Eludes Thompson, but Gilson gets there. He goes back down low with it to Helgeson. Tried to center to Shackle. Went all the way through to Gilson. Gilson down low with it to Thompson. Stuffs one out in front. Helgeson shot, save made. That was Porter Shackle. And then Thompson walking it out front. Oh. Puck still loose. And TJ Lloyd, fresh out of the penalty box, picks it up. And he'll carry the other way. Lloyd still with it. Shot blocked away by Bamber. Got that with the inside of his left leg. Peyton Matsui turns it deep into the Seawolf zone once again. UAA puts it up off the glass, and all the way down the ice it goes. No icing as Brigmanis catches up to it. He's tied up by Helgeson as we're under 40 seconds to go in our first period. Aiden Weston goes down behind the Nanook net. Puck comes free up that far wall. Flipped high in the air out of the zone by Fairbanks. Caleb Huffman chases it down. Tried to give off a pass. That maybe wasn't the best idea. But right back the other way now comes Ben Anderson. Anderson driving hard to the net. Using that size. Yep. And we've got a whistle. We're going to have another faceoff coming up here in the Nanook zone with 12.8 seconds to go. Nice little burst of speed there by Anderson. Just couldn't quite get all the way around to get a really good scoring chance. AJ McCauley played that pretty well. It would be nice to have that 6-5 reach. Yeah. See what you could do trying to beat a guy to a corner like that. And 
got the athletic trainer talking to one of the Seawolves down at the end of the bench right there behind Joey Lamaru. Off the draw, shot by Merritt right into the belly of Charleston. William Gilson getting some attention. And Almquist again will step in to take the draw. Merritt tried to hand that one off. Back to the point it goes. Faking the first shot, the second shot goes wide, and that's going to do it. Period number one is in the books. And that was a really good first period, to be honest with you. A lot of penalties kind of skews that, but it had a heck of a pace to it. Both teams got some shots on net. Both teams hit a goal post. Both goaltenders were solid. Well, I think the Seals are playing as though they've made sure to tell Jared Well, hey, you're, we're going to leave you hanging a few times here and there. We're, we're trying to press the issue, which, again, that one goal could just could solve so much and change so much that you can't really blame them at this point for throwing anything against the wall to see if it'll do the old stickage. Yeah, you know, one goal, I think, for the Seawolves helps them maybe loosen the grip on their sticks a little bit, relax a little bit, and uh, just go out there and have fun. So at this first intermission, you're going to get to watch the Alaska Airlines puck shoot. And then shortly after that, you'll get to hear a conversation that I had a little bit earlier with Aiden Weston. So we'll be back shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's now time for the Alaska Airlines Puck Shoot. Let's go down to the ice for Lucy from 101.3 KGOT has two hockey competitors tonight. Makes you, well, a little different. 
We're an independent bunch, yet we can't get along without each other. We like unique things, and we have a unique need. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the whole reason we created Club 49, the only travel benefits program made for Alaskans. So you can be you. Alaska Airlines Club 49. One in five Americans deal with mental health conditions every year. No matter who you are, it's okay to ask for help. So don't wait. Premier Blue Cross, always in your corner. When ConocoPhillips began working in Alaska more than a half century ago, one of the cornerstones of our operation was to provide real assistance for the institutions that help our state thrive. And today, as Alaska's leader in responsible resource development, ConocoPhillips Alaska is proud to continue the support for the University of Alaska Foundation and Alaska's scholars that we began in 1979. ConocoPhillips Alaska, unlocking Alaska's energy resources. Here's to big days, new experiences, and the moments worth saving for. Alaska 529 is proud to support brighter futures for so many families. To learn about Alaska 529, its investment objectives, risks, and costs, please carefully read the plan disclosure document available at alaska529plan.com. Alaska 529. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. Don't re-roof, restore with Alaska Roof Restorations, specializing in the inspection, repair, and restoration of existing flat, low slope, and metal roofs. Our completely seamless system seals out water and is proven to perform in Alaska's tough climate, offering a long-lasting, cost-effective, sustainable alternative to traditional re-roofing. Plus, with maintenance reapplication and our renewable warranty, your roof can last the life of the building. Contact us today for a free quote. AlaskaRoofRestorations.com
Create a backyard that's out of this world. Right now, save $20 on the VGA57 blower. Real steel. Find yours. Endless opportunities are waiting for you with part-time service in the Alaska Army National Guard. You have the chance to be a guardian of this amazing state and help protect what makes it so special. The Alaska Army National Guard responds quickly to emergencies and helps citizens in need. You also have the chance to earn money for the education you need to reach your career goals. Learn how you can help guard the last frontier at nationalguard.com slash AK. And welcome back to Avis Alaska Sports Complex. Pleased to be joined now by Steve Wolf, freshman forward Aiden Weston ahead of or uh, during tonight's game with the University of Alaska Fairbanks. First off, Aiden, you're from Anchorage. You come back here to play for the Sea Wolves. What was it like the first time you stepped on the ice with the UAA team? What was the biggest adjustment that you saw? Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a next step up from junior hockey. It's a lot faster. Everybody's stronger, but uh, um, I, I enjoy it a little bit more. It's a little bit faster play, which I think suits my game well. Now, I think I saw on the NHL website that you had initially committed to Fairbanks. Is that true? Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, my first year of junior, I committed there, and uh, my next season, I decommitted and decided to come to Anchorage. Was that when it was announced that the club was coming back? Um, it was. It was uh, shortly after. It was. It was during the Seawolf season, but uh, I went. I went to a game, and uh, I liked what I saw, and um, I wanted to play for my hometown. So. It's kind of nice. It's kind of nice, probably just going straight from Boki over here. Now it's it's a short commute. Yeah, no, definitely not much of a change location-wise, but um, yeah, it's it's great to be home. Not much of a change either in the size of the building. Boki seats about 800. We get about 800 plus in here every night. What's that like playing college hockey in a, a pretty small building? Um, yeah, I mean, I think the energy's up for sure. Um, it's not as spread out as other places. Um, I think it's good for. For now, I mean, obviously we'd like to move into a bigger building eventually, but uh, rebuilding the program, I think it's nice to keep it small for now. I think we all want to move into a bigger building. We're, we're really looking forward to, to that happening here in the hopefully near future. Yeah. So growing up here, how much time did you spend following the Seawolves? Um, yeah, I mean, I went to games with my buddies as kids and whatnot and got to watch a couple Governor Cup games and stuff like that. It was a little bit sad when they went away for a couple of years, but uh, it's nice to be a part of the team now that they're in the middle of a rebuild. You guys have played some really good teams this year on the road, especially Wisconsin, Penn State, just to name two. What has been the difference in playing those teams as opposed to playing the rivalry games against Fairbanks? Because those seem to even step it up a notch higher. Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely a little bit more personal. Um, each team wants to be the best in the state and everybody wants to win a little piece of hardware. So uh, I think the rivalry is just a lot more intense. So the first time you guys got to play him was up in Fairbanks, obviously. You step on the ice on the Carlson Center. That's probably one of the more harsh environments that a Seawolf player is going to face regardless of where they play in college. Yeah, I mean, they had a uh, good amount of fans our first uh, series up there this, uh, this year. Um, they definitely don't like us up there, but same when they come here. We don't like them either, so uh, it's a little love-hate relationship, I guess. What was the first thing that hit you, not not a person, but the first thing that hit you when you get take that first shift in a rivalry game, the intensity, uh, when did that really kind of start to sink in, or was it right away? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously you're kind of dialed in before the game. Um, I think the game starts before the puck actual drops, if that makes sense. Um, just in practice, we have to prepare for this weekend. I mean, it was the biggest weekend of our season so far, and so we really need a win tonight. That's a, a really good point you make. What kind of things do do some of maybe the upperclassmen stress when you come into a week like this? Um, things that you need to look out for, things that you need to prepare for. Um, I think a lot of it's just uh, attention to detail and discipline. Um, you saw last night, I mean, the refing is uh, not the best, but uh, we got to do our best to stay out of the box and keep it five on five because I think that's uh, where we thrive the most. Definitely. Uh, I won't comment on the refs either. I did that enough last night as I was up there. So moving from from junior to college, what's been the, the biggest adjustment that you've had to make yourself? What's been the, the biggest difference for you? Um, obviously, I'm not like uh, one of the biggest guys out there. So I think just making quicker plays and 
uh, getting off guys in the corner because um, you have a lot less time out there. So um, that's probably the biggest adjustment, just making plays quicker. Now you're one of the guys, you along with uh, Riley and Gunner, I think you guys have been in the, the lineup since day one. Uh, yeah, I, I missed a couple games due to injury, but um, I've played a majority of the games. So I'm fortunate to have been. Um, but yeah, we got to start picking up the pace here and uh, get a win against Fairbanks finally. I agree with you 100%. Aiden, thank you very much for the time. Good luck tonight. Yeah, thank you. That's Aiden Weston. We'll be back with more UAA hockey in just a few moments. And we are back with more UAA hockey. First intermission, 0-0 zero, zero is our score. As you get to take a look at some of the highlights from that first period, you're going to see quite a few saves and quite a few penalties. And... Uh, that's what happened in the first period. UAA 0 for 2 with the man advantage. UAF 0 for 3 with the man advantage. Seawolves took four penalties for 16 minutes. Fairbanks took two for four minutes. Uh, the reason for the 16 minutes, Caleb Huffman uh, got a little wordy with one of the officials, hurt his feelings, and he went and sat for 10 minutes. So, Shots on goal, 13 to nine in favor of UAF. Both teams put five shots on goal on their power plays. Yeah, as we mentioned, a little more loosey-goosey from both teams there. Certainly not as tight and opportunities both teams had them. Just kind of a, a wildly, unevenly beautiful period, if you will. I mean, it wasn't, there wasn't much that was precise or anything like that, but it was, as we, talked about earlier the buzzwords today entertaining and fun and it was both of those things now UA's just looking for that goal as we hear the world famous UA fight song that should be played at every sporting event here in Anchorage agreed the last of the Seawolves trickling over to the bench UA wearing their Saturday night gold jerseys with the white and green striping green pants yellow socks looking sharp and Fairbanks is wearing blue they've got some yellow in there <laughs> and they've got yellow numbers on their blue helmets on one side and something else on the other side Fairbanks off the draw, sent it deep into the Seawolf zone. Jared Whale out of his net to play it around the boards. And the pass trying to connect to Anderson didn't get to him. He'll go hard into the back wall along with McDonald. Centering feed to LaFay. He got his stick hit right as he tried to pull the trigger. And UAF will escape. He was so close to kicking that right on to Matt Kanash's stick, but that just a little too slow getting over there, so the opportunity was lost. Got a scrum now on that half wall. Puck finally comes free. As the Seawolves put that one high in the air, that's going to roll down on net, so no icing. Seawolves make wholesale changes as the Nanooks hit the blue line, and they come in off sides. Brady Risk, a little confused by that play. Thanks again to Aiden Weston for giving me a few minutes of his time tonight. At the second intermission, we'll hear from Caleb Huffman. I look good. Yeah, fans everywhere, David Tuttle. I try, I try. But as I was saying, we'll hear from Caleb Huffman after the second. Um, I did ask him about last night's penalty just briefly. Of course, and if he I would, agreed to everything about it, I assume. If I would have waited, I could have asked him about tonight's penalty as well. <laughs> ask him if he realizes that he's got almost 30 minutes in penalties this weekend. But Porter Shackle throws a pass out front. That's Gosh. broken up. Penalty coming up. I think that's going to be Helgeson again. Yep. And that's in the a, slot area, just got a stick wrapped around there and a little hook or trip. Here we go again. Now they're going to call oh, it a shackle. shackle. Yeah. I think they got the wrong number there. 
Either way, it's a trip, and UAA will be shorthanded once again. Well, the amount of penalty kills you're on certainly doesn't help your offensive game plan, and that's been the case for UAA this last little, this huge rut they've been in. But they clear it there to start off the penalty kill correctly. So McDonald has it for the Nanux, trying to get away from Connor Merritt, gives off to Chase Dubois. Centering feed, Matsui gives off, takes or has a chance at a return pass, but it misses him, goes into the corner. And then Dubois can't keep it in the zone. Johnny Sorensen with it up the left wing side. He blows a tire and loses control. Seawolf trips over him, and Sorensen, Sorensen gets back up, fires it into a mass of bodies, and it finally comes around the wall to McDonald. Pass cut off by Almquist, oh. and he was trying to leave it off for a teammate who'd stopped skating with him. Coming in now, Riley Thompson. Weirder exchanges you're ever going to see. Very, very. on the power play. Thompson works that one down low, and he's got it trapped in there with a couple of Natick players. Buck finally comes out. And Bergmanis will pick it up for the Nanooks. 50 seconds to go in the Shackle Minor. 17.25 to go in the period. Bergmanis has it knocked off his stick by Thompson, and he's just going to fling it right back down. And here he's going to change. That was about 30 <laughs> seconds all killing it in the offensive zone, which is what you want to do if you're a penalty killer, but he exhausted himself right quick. Yes. Brady Risk carries it in, rims it around. It's cut off, and then the Seawolves will send it right back down the ice. Pierce Charleston comes out to set that one up for TJ mm. Lloyd. Almost gives it up to Alex Gomez. Both teams just making some really head-scratching plays uh, tonight, which I think definitely adds to a little bit of the entertainment value. You mentioned slap shot earlier. Hitting the tape. Oops. Centering pass, shot scored. That is an even strength goal by Brady Risk at 324. UA's buddy Greg Manis was loose in the lower right circle and he waited, waited, waited until he could just send that easy saucer over to Mr. Risk. For Brady Risk, that's gonna be a seventh goal of the season. And we have a goal here. Finally breaking the proverbial ice here at the Chuck Hoban Ice Rink. And that comes on the heels of what was a really good penalty kill again by the Seawolves. No shots on goal given up. And now UAA will get a chance on the penalty or on the power play. Xavier Jean-Louis is going to go sit. Interference will be the call. And that penalty will come at 329. Thompson to take the draw. It's pushed over to Helgeson. Now it's back to Bamber. Cross ice he goes to Gilson. Back to Bamber. Down low to Helgeson. Cross ice to Gilson. Down low to Thompson. He tried to stuff it out front to Shackle. Puck now tied up in the corner. Shackle digs it free. Gilson to Bamber. Back to Gilson. Right circle centering pass or a Seam pass, he got it through to Helgeson. Max didn't get any wood on it. Puck comes through and save made by Pierce Charleston. Second time tonight that he's looked behind him, but he had it. And I was incorrect, it was not Xavier Jean-Louis. It looked like he was the yeah, one was skating to the penalty was great, box. Uh, Nicolette's. Nicolette's. So the power play unit stays on for UAA. Max Helgeson taking the draw. Buck tied up on that half wall, finally comes out on a Nanook stick. And Kyle Gaffney 
We'll send that one all the way down the ice. Brett Bamber will track it down with a minute 15 to go on power play number three for the Seawolves. Puck sent ahead, deflected in deep. Shackle gets a nice whack at the okay. glove. And uh, now gonna have hurt feelings all around. Referee slow on the whistle right there, so Porter took an extra whack at the puck. Can't blame him for that, but. Minute five to go here in this Seawolf power play. Face off to the left of the Fairbanks cage. Almquist to take the draw for UAA. Finally comes out of the circle on Matt Allen's stick. Pass back is deflected away. It's Kate Ehrenholt. And Gunnar Van Dam plays that one very nicely. Here's Almquist. And Van Dam up the left wing side. Van Dam shot saved by Charleston, and he's nice going to haul job. that one in. Well, one a few times all weekend, we see Charleston make the real heady kind of see that save in all the way and make sure there was no rebound opportunity. Forty-seven seconds now left on the Seawolf man advantage. It'll be Almquist to take the draw once again with Matt Suey to one back by Almquist. Van Dam sends it down low and then takes the return feed. It's being watched up high by Bernie. Puck gets to the front of the net. And now it's back to the point. It's Huffman. Leaves off for Van Dam. Watched by Braden Bernie still. Huffman gives off, centering or a cross ice pass looking for Van Dam that didn't connect cleanly. Van Dam has it back again to Huffman. Almquist goes down low with the feed. Almquist still with it at the hash marks. Power play coming to an end here for UAA. And the Nanak's able to chip that one right back out into the neutral zone. Carrying or trying to catch up to that one was, was uh, Braden Nicolette, and he just got thumped by Caleb Huffman. Nice little reverse hit there. Puck stays in the zone. Tisdale, cross corner dump. Matt Johnson with it. Fairbanks trying to come out. They do, but Matt Johnson takes it away at center ice. Johnson with it on the backhand. He goes high over the net. Kozabut throws it right back in on goal, and Charleston will save that one and hold on for a whistle. We haven't seen a lot of Matt Johnson, so obviously he was eager to make something happen on that shift. He showed it with two really nice plays along the right wing side of the offensive zone. Another guy we haven't seen much of is Mitch LaFay since early on. Puck hops over Carson Kozabud's stick back through the neutral zone. Kozabud being watched over there by Dubois. Seawolves to Matt Johnson once again. Still with it. Shot comes in. That was blocked. Johnson gets it back. Leaves it off for Gomez behind the net. He's trying to fend off a Natick defender and an official. Now it's Tisdale, gets it back to the point to Kozabud. Kozabud just throws it right back down low. It's cut off down there and chipped up off the glass and out to the neutral zone. Kozabud in a battle with Dubois. Puck finally comes out and it's swatted back in by Gomez. Gomez goes in after, looked like Berkmanis and the Natics. Three on two, materializing if they hurry. Shot saved by Whale and then it rolls into the corner and the Seawolves will come back up the right wing or the left wing side, and there's Mitch LaFay, sends it in. Pierce Charleston will leave that off for Xavier Jean-Louis. He takes a hit, but gets the pass ahead. It's off the stick of Brady Risk, and Caleb Huffman gathers back in for the Seawolves. 12.39 here to go in our second period. one nothing UAF. Pass right there, eludes Risk again, and it's Huffman. Tries to give it back to Gilson. Gilson's going to fire that one around. Not out of the zone, though. Kept alive by Israel's Anton Rubtsov. 
trying to pull that one free down in the corner. He has it back now in the high slot area. He's harassed and stolen away by Gilson. Back out into the neutral zone. Fairbanks regroups, and they're right back into the zone. Seawolves coming right back out with Helgeson. Helgeson cuts to his right, hangs on. He gets hooked on the play a little bit. No call. And loses control down beneath the goal line. Porter Shackle uses every inch of that 6-3 frame to knock that puck down. Now it's Van Dam from beneath his goal line. Cross ice feed from Weston. And here comes Gunnar Van Dam. Shot save made by Charleston. And the puck still loose down there somewhere. Pierce Charleston found it in his glove. So we've got a whistle and a face off coming up in the Nanak zone. 11 and a half to go in our second period. One nothing. UAF. Well, the body language experts that you and I are that most definitely. I mean, you're not seeing UA. You're not dejected, upset, like physically, like just mad at the, how the situation. So it's right there. And though they're playing much better than they did last night, obviously. Just nothing to show for it as of yet. Bamber's shot goes wide. Pierce Charleston falls down. And trying to work it out of the zone was Matt Kofi. Not able to do so. Helgeson tried to kick that one over to Shackle. That didn't connect. And puck sent into the Seawolf zone. Looking for Kothi. The pass was deflected by Van Dam. Back to the point now. TJ Lloyd to McDonald. His shot blocked by Porter Shackle. And Shackle's got it. Looking for Helgeson. Helgeson has it. Being watched by TJ Lloyd. And Lloyd defends that nicely. Gaffney now picking it up for the Nanooks. Didn't have it long as Max Osborne knocked it off his stick. Then Matt Allen steps into Gaffney, and he definitely got the worst of that. We're going to call that offside, even though the puck never crossed the blue line. And we're going to get a whistle and a faceoff coming up here right down in front of us outside of the Nanook blue line. Shots on goal, 15-13. to 13. which is a huge step up from last night, where shots on goal for the game, I believe, were 21 to 15, if I remember right. Nanooks send the puck deep into the Seawolf end. Kozabud getting to it. He sends it up the wall. It's kept alive by Bergmanis. Now it's Max Osborne. Merritt to Almquist. Gets around one defender. Almquist shot save ooh, 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 ooh. by Pierce Charleston. Nice save. And a good opportunity there for Ben Almquist. He's had a couple of good chances. Last night uh, had a breakaway opportunity. Yeah, Try Ben, ben Force just put on that backhand at the last second there and just kind of flipped it into the midsection area of Charleston. But one of the rare bonafide opportunities for the UA offense. A clean look. Few and far between. Off the draw, Bergmanis sends it around behind his own net. Stepping in from the blue line to play that. Looked like Gilson. Tisdale had it momentarily and it's pulled away from him and Bergmanis. His pass into the neutral zone to Brady Risk. Cross ice feed to Rubsov hit the official, and now the puck pops up into the Fairbanks bench, so we're gonna have a face-off coming up in the neutral zone once again after we take a timeout. 9.57 to go, second period, one nothing. Fairbanks on top. He's gonna make his way towards the visitor's bench through the student section. Bobby, make your way to this grandstand. He's a 35-year Special Olympics athlete. He's also part of the Alaska Hockey Hall of Fame. Soon to be inducted maybe into the Alaska Sports Hall of Fame. Bobby Hill making his way towards the Zamboni entrance. Give him a high five as he flies on by. The one, the only, Bobby Hill. Nice job, Bobby! Our good friend 
Bobby Hill giving a little John Cena. You can't see me to the Fairbanks crowd down here to our right at the end of his nightly horseman jaunt. Bobby's looking like a possibility to finally get in the Alaska Sports Hall of Fame as he is now a world champion in the Special Olympics. So it's always good to see him do that routine. And it definitely gets the crowd going, that's for sure. Gilson trying to chase that one down. He got to it, tried to play it up the wall, but it's cut off by Risk. Sends it back down low for Israels. Israels gives off to Rupsov. Now it's Risk once again. He's going to send it right back down beneath the goal line. Bergmanis now at the left point. And throws it towards the front of the net. Jared Whale gets that one with the pads. Now it's flipped up into the into the air and it hit something on the Seawolf bench, I believe. Deflected off the bench, perhaps? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not totally sure what it hit, but they're bringing the face off back down deep in the UAA end. Just past the halfway point of this one. As the UA goalless stretch continues unmercifully. Up to seven and a half periods now. Actually closer to nine full periods now since Gunnar Van Dam's goal in Wisconsin. Puck rolls away from Matt Kanash. Aaron Holtz carries it out for Fairbanks, tries to send it deep into the Seawolf end, but he hits Matsui in the back. Puck finally sent deeper into the zone by Jean-Louis. Big hit put on there by Kosabud. Fairbanks bench up in arms, but no call made. Puck tied up on that far half wall. It was moved and then it was put right back in there by Johnny Sorensen. Finally comes out and back to the point it goes. Jean-Louis throws one towards the net, hits bodies and goes wide. Over skating it was Chase Dubois. He gets it back and goes down low to Sorensen. Cross ice with it. Centering feed to Sorensen. Got around Max Osborne, at least for the moment. Osborne's still chasing. Caden Nielsen, back to the point he goes. Nielsen to Bruneski, Dawson Bruneski trying to get himself a lane. Actually, start scratch that, that was McDonald trying to get himself a lane. TJ Lloyd throws one towards the net, but wide. Sorensen has it back. Shot comes in by TJ Lloyd, that goes over the net. Well, that was certainly one of those stretches where UAF was definitely asserting itself and keeping possession in the offensive end for what seemed like a year and a half. Yes. And the faceoff's going to stay in that zone, but at least UAA is able to make a change because that combination was not making it work. No, fortunately, the, the puck was sent up into the protective netting, I think. I couldn't see through the heads in front of me. But it, they're saying it was deflected, so... Hence the change. Off the draw. Well, Puck's it toward Jared Whale. Oh. And oh my goodness, he got across <laughs> and made that save. Wow. That had goal written all over it. I think we're going to see the replay. He re-splits, if you will. I think he was already down, and then he kind of found a way to push that leg out again, that left leg. Down, left leg, and it gets oh it with a glove. Goodness. Man, what dexterity. What an effort from Jared Whale right there. Matt Cothey's gonna see that in his nightmares. Seawolf's trying to force that puck up the boards. Finally comes out, Brett Bamber sends it around behind the net, Gunnar Van Dam chasing it down. Cothey gets to it first. And finally, it's gonna be carried out by Helgeson. He gets off to Shackle, sends it into the Nanook zone. Helgeson ridden into the boards by Bergmanis. Nice. Shackle in to take the puck away, centering feed and Shackle's stick failed him. More slop as it goes through the neutral zone. 
Puck now deep in the Seawolf end once again. Rubtsov and Risk down there trying to work that puck free. They finally do. Rubtsov shot, not on net. Now it's Brady Risk, tries to center. It's hit down there by Weston. And Aiden Weston can't clear the zone. Risk tried to saucer a pass through the Rubtsov. That didn't connect cleanly either. Seawolves having trouble right now getting the puck out of their own end. Rubtsov once again centering feed and Jared Whale winds up with that in his glove. Well, this is definitely the part of the program where UAA knows they have Jared Whale playing at his best as we've seen here just the last two or three minutes. Two splendid saves. Okay. UA just on the offensive end, just can't get those things to click as Porter Shackle had it for a moment in the slot a few minutes ago, but just not enough time to get it off clean. And I think we got another power play possibly coming up I for UAF. Have matching minors. Gunner Van Dam and yeah. Oh, it must be Peyton Matsui. Oh no, Brady Risk. So at 13 four on four. So yeah, definitely coincidentals. So it'll be Matsui in to take the draw for Fairbanks, opposed by Ben Almquist to the left of Jared Whale. Right off the draw, puck pops right up in the air and almost hit the linesman in the face. McDonald skates the blue line, leaves off. Now it's TJ Lloyd. Shot hits traffic in front, rebounds. Oh, I thought that didn't get through. Didn't thought get I through. saw net. Good. <laughs> McDonald back to Lloyd. Lloyd trying to find himself a shooting lane. He's being watched closely by Thompson. Shot on Jared Whale. Oh. Man. And over skating the puck, trying Man. to come out of the zone was Matt Allen. I think he had a little bit of help from the Fairbanks stick there. Shot comes in, and Almquist gets that one off of his stick and sends it up into the protective netting as Braden Burney had the opportunity. You know, no excuses whatsoever, but the, <laughs> the limited amount of luck that UA gets, and you, know, you obviously got to create it yourself with that instance right there. Matt Allen had a chance to break it out. I just got a, a split second. Semi overskated it. Semi got a UAF stick in the way. Either way, it's still in the defensive end. Chance now for Tisdale. He'll get it out, and Bamber will send it now deep into the Nanak zone. Bamber will chase it down himself behind the Fairbanks net. Matsui pulls it away from him, and then Bamber knocks him off the puck. Back out into the neutral zone, though, comes Brugmanis. Across the Seawolf blue line, tries to throw a cross-ice pass. Nice hand-eye right there to knock that puck down by Gilson. Puck now back into the Nanak zone. Tisdale had it for a moment and just able to keep that in the zone ah. was Gilson, but Fairbanks is going to come right back out with it. Gilson will start ahead once again. His pass, cross ice, looking for Tisdale. It hit a Fairbanks stick on the way through and didn't connect. Centering feed got through Riley Thompson's skates. He'll pick it up on the far side wall. Thompson shot, didn't make it on goal. He's got it behind the net now. Goes back up to Gilson. William Gilson still with it, turns one towards the net. Off traffic and well wide. Gilson and Bergman has come together on the far half wall. And the players... Van Dam and Risk both coming out of the penalty box now, so we're back to five aside as the Nanix in the puck. No one had an, all the way any down. energy at the end of that four on four no. segment. Gomez over skates. Back to the blue line it goes. Xavier Sean Louis shot goes wide. Centering pass. Xavier Jean Louis picks it up. He's being watched out there by Gomez. And then Connor Merritt sends that one into his own bench. And we'll have a face-off coming up just outside of the Fairbanks blue line. All 
Okay, they're going to drop it at center ice with 3.35 to go in our second period. one nothing Fairbanks on top. Puck backhanded ahead by the Nanooks. Jared Whale comes out of his net. He'll try to play it along. Not able to quite get it out of the zone was Connor Merritt. Puck now rimmed all the way around. Merritt will be the first one on it this time. And he'll get a little bit of help, but it'll leave the zone. Gunnar Van Dam with it. Shot blockered away by Charleston. Van Dam was the first one on it. He's down behind the Nanooks net, tied up. Puck comes out from Xavier Jean-Louis. Cross ice feed doesn't connect cleanly. Oh. And Bamber sends that one ahead for Van Dam. The puck is chipped up and over the glass. And we'll neutral have another face-off. Neutral zone face-off coming up here with 2.53 left to play in the second period. Seawolves force it into the Nanak zone. And the Nanak send it right back out. Kozabud sends it deep into the Fairbank zone. McDonald gets to it first, and it's sent all the way down the ice. That's going to go for icing. Yes, Porter Shackle just ahead of Kate Ehrenholtz. The anticipation's really killing me. Can you uh, get one? <laughs> I I mean, that's really kind of where we're at. Off the faceoff, puck rolls into the far corner, and UAF able that's to send that one out of well the zone. Well earned interference from William yes. Gilson right there. Hot pass through the top of the blue paint, didn't connect. And the Seawolves trying to come out on the near side boards. Finally, the puck is forced to the neutral zone. And Helgeson picks it up, crosses the blue line as he's watched by McDonald. Has the puck knocked off his stick. Caleb Huffman trying to keep it right there, not able to do so. Gilson with it. His pass ahead for Shackle didn't connect. Porter throws it around behind the net. Tied up once again on that half wall. Almquist is over there. And you can hear the ref telling him to move it. It finally comes out, but it comes out on a Nanook stick. And back the other way. Cade Nielsen sending it deep into the zone. Puck gets through Matt Cothy in the corner. Bergmanis chips or pinches in to try to keep that one alive. Gets it over to Sorensen. Puck finally knocked off his stick. And a chance for Caleb Huffman to clear the zone, which he does. Fairbanks turns it right back into the zone. And now it's Brady Risk for Fairbanks. Brady Risk shot saved by Whale. Rebound still there. And the puck finally rolls wide of the net. Risk with it once again goes back to the point. Bergmanis fans on the shot. Shot comes in this Gosh. time and it's in the net. AJ McCauley. Threw it through a mess of traffic, and it found its way just inside the far post, beating Jared Whale. And that it's puck luck nothing. I was that puck luck I was talking about. Brigman skates over that, some, but they miraculously are able to keep it in the zone. <laughs> and here we go. UAF takes a two nothing lead. I mean, this is almost reaching comical proportions of this bad luck, whatever you want to call it unfortunate bounces yes all of the above so carrying ahead now Matt Johnson he gets tied up in the corner by Bruneski Connor Merritt and Riley Thompson trying to work that puck free finally rolls up the half wall and the Nanix will carry out and it's Israel's Pulls up, goes cross ice with the feed as the Seawolves break that up. Puck sent in. 
Never made it on net. UEA will skate it out. And we're going to have too many men on the ice called against Fairbanks, so that'll put UEA on another power play. So they'll get to start the third with almost a full two-minute power play. That penalty comes in 1950. Chase Dubois will serve it. Off the draw, puck tied up on the near side wall, and that is where Max Helgeson will take one last shot. And then Riley Thompson's gonna take a couple of hits. just for standing there. But period number two is in the books. Two to nothing UAF on top. Pair of goals scored in that second period. And Thinking we might see some penalties come yeah, out Max of that little scrum. Max Helgeson heard something he did not like there, so it's just a matter of. Well, Riley Thompson got hit by two different guys after the whistle, and it was one of the times this weekend that UAA hasn't really retaliated to anything, so I'm sure if it's matching minors, they're going to wonder why. Connor Merritt down there getting an explanation. As the Sea Wolves make their way off the ice, and they'll be followed by the Nanooks. Well, really, this shouldn't be so complicated. It didn't seem that egregious on no. any level. So Harrison Israels and Connor Merritt will skate off now to their respective rooms. And we can get on with our second intermission festivities, if you will. And shortly you'll get to hear my chat with Caleb Huffman uh, that I had prior to tonight's game. So you'll hear that in a little bit. And we'll be back with more Seawolf Hockey in just a few moments. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for the second intermission game, all brought to you by our friends at GCI. Let's go down to Lucy for Pack Your Bags. It's time to pack your bags. Sponsored by GCI and Alaska Airlines, contestants Micah and David will collect items off the middle of the ice, pack their bags, after their bags are packed and zipped, that's very important, did you both hear? Zipped, oh, they're stretching, okay. They will then get on the scooter and get back to their side. First one back with their bag zipped will win a brand new set of Apple AirPod Pros courtesy of GCI. Micah, David, are we ready? Ready, set, go. Let's hear it for him. Micah and David. Oh, lost his helmet spirit. Thank you. 
little assistance, that's important. Don't forget, zip. You got it. On the, oh, oh. How are you gonna do it, But Scoot backwards. He's a, he's a mess over there. <laughs> Come on, let's hear it! Woo! Get that beach ball in there. Uh, is this how you pack for vacation? <laughs> Look at this! Oh! Let's give a round of applause! Thank you, GCI! Apple AirPod Pros! Congratulations! Thanks, Lucy, and thank you, contestants. Proud sponsor, GCI, of our second intermission game. AirPod Pros going to the winner tonight. Thank you so much from GCI and Alaska Airlines. Create a backyard that's out of this world. Right now, get a free carrying case, chain, and hat with the purchase of Select Steel Chainsaws. Real steel. Find yours. Let's definitely do that after work on Friday. Oh, a lynx. I gotta go. Oh, wow. Is that the new iPhone? The one with titanium? It's so light. iPhone 15 Pro, forged in titanium. It's epic. Get one on us with Trade-In on Alaska's most advanced network. Can I hold it? I'm okay, in case anyone's wondering. Feeling uneasy about your financial future? You need a partner that helps lighten the load. Welcome to Global Credit Union. It means early payday. Your paycheck up to three days early with direct deposit. Accounts with no NSF fees. And a mobile app with tools to help you manage your family budget. At Global, we take member care seriously. With branches near you and a 24-7 U.S.-based call center staffed by real people. Join us at Global Credit Union. I'm the strong mom. I've always taken care of the whole family. So when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I knew I was gonna have to be strong for them and for me. It was tough, but with AROC, I felt like I was on the good side of bad. It's not like a hospital, it's like a spa. And with so many doctor's appointments in one place, that's really nice. 
My team is friendly and upbeat. And when you're not feeling that way yourself, that really goes a long way. Anchorage Radiation Oncology Center. Hope is here. We've all been there. It's senior year and you have nothing but questions. Sometimes you just can't stop asking yourself, what's next? With over 100 degree and certificate programs to help you build a bright future, student activities and clubs to find your community, financial aid opportunities, and resources to help you succeed, the University of Alaska Anchorage has you covered. What's next? UAA is what's next. Apply today. And welcome back to the Avis Alaska Sports Complex. Pleased to be joined now by Seawolf defenseman Caleb Huffman. Caleb, uh, Anchorage guy, you've been following the team, I'm guessing, for a long time, so you know what Gov Cup games mean. Yeah, I mean, actually, I was born in Fairbanks, so the first, like, hockey games I ever went to uh, were Nanix versus Anchorage, and I was on the other side of it when I was living there, but I've been in Anchorage now since I was about eight and been able to see uh, the program year after year, um, and it's pretty special to be a part of it this year. I'm glad you came around. That's a that's a tough way to start off being born in Fairbanks. It's bad enough having to travel up there once in a while. So anyways, we'll move on from that. <laughs> so you joined the team last year uh, about midway through the season, 12 games in or so. And so you got a taste of, of the rivalry a little bit last year. What did you think when you first took the ice against these guys for the first time in that, that rivalry uh, feeling? Yeah, it was pretty cool. I think uh, the, f the first time I played against them last year was in Fairbanks. So pretty cool experience to play in a building um, where I grew up watching a lot of those games and uh, being on the away side of it was pretty cool it's uh, definitely uh, an aggressive series um, a lot of bad blood between the teams and uh, with the six games that we play against each other every year it just keeps uh, boiling it up a little more so it's uh, pretty cool builds up a little bit more because you guys have, have lost nine straight to them now and obviously that's something that that looking to end tonight um, what kind of things get set out on the ice right now with a you know game like last night? I know you left early. You had that hit. Thought it was a little bit questionable as to whether or not you should have got tossed for it, but they don't ask me. So, yeah. um, but what kind of things are, are going on out there that we don't see? Um. Well, I think the reason that we're kind of struggling against them is for one, just losing every game against them last year um, kind of gives you a weird mindset when coming into it. Um, but out on the ice, it's a. Uh, the things that we are struggling with the most, I think, is just uh, talking in the D zone. Um, we have a lot of collapses in our D zone, um, just not communicating. And then uh, we need to just be more aggressive around the net. We're just not scoring right now. And I think it just comes with uh, confidence, which is which is tough to gain when you we haven't beat the team before. But um, we just need to pop one or two and get the confidence going, and we'll be flying. I, w I would say in a game like this, first goal is huge. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely huge. It's such a momentum swing because um, you know you just always you always want that lead um, it's way easier to defend a lead than to chase it obviously and uh, against a in a game like this it's super tight every game um, and that first goal is just huge when you get behind early how difficult is it when you know that you're you're struggling against a certain team how difficult is it to keep the guys on the bench from watching their heads drop how hard is it just to, hey, we got to keep going, boys. There's a lot of time left. Well, I mean, uh, it's not something that we haven't been through before. Um, it's just adversity and uh, pumping each other's tires on the bench, getting getting guys up. You know, someone makes a tough play, um, you know, you give them a pat on the back, you tell them they're all right, and a lot of game left. Um, you just got to keep the morale up on the bench. Uh, once the bench starts getting negative, more things start to fall apart. So. Okay, let's go positive now. <laughs> you came in, like I said, last year, uh, early in the season. What was the what went uh, into the decision process for you to, to come here from Kenai uh, a dozen games into the year? 
Well, I mean, you know, ever since I was little, I wanted to play college hockey. And um, when you get the opportunity to join middle of the season, it's just something extremely hard to turn down. Um, I love the group that we had in Kenai. It was, it was a fun year, but just when you get an opportunity like that, um, you got to take it, um, especially it puts me in a better spot this year. You know, I got some games under my belt, um, probably getting in the lineup more than I would be if if I hadn't came in. So um, it was a tough transition at first, but I'm glad, I'm glad I did it. You came here to do a team last year. It was basically an expansion team is how I referred to them all year. Uh, you know, quite a few grad transfers, a lot of freshmen like yourself. And it was just one of those things where Matt Shazby had to throw basically a bunch of pieces into a blender and see how they came out. And it turned out to, to mold into a, a pretty solid team. You guys were playing really well in, in certain points of the season. It's kind of carried on this year with that leadership group that you have that carried over. Talk a little bit about moving from last year, the team that you had, to, to this year. Um, well, it's just a lot older. So, I mean, like the guys here, um, they've been around the game longer. They've, they've played college hockey before. They just have the experience, and that's something that's huge, uh, especially with the first year program. You know, we had a lot of guys transfer in, um, some grad transfers, seniors, juniors, just uh, things like that help uh, build a culture. Because, um, I mean, if you have 15 or so freshman guys, you know, they've never played at this level before. They're not really sure how it works. It's tough. But having those guys come in and step in uh, really helped us. What was the biggest adjustment for you when you, when you first did make the jump up? I think the biggest thing I was struggling with was just confidence. Um, when you're just playing against guys that are drafted in the NHL every other night and just a lot of older guys too, the game's faster. Um, but the biggest thing besides confidence, probably just thinking the game. Um, you don't have to be like a, just a lightning fast skater to play at this level, but you gotta, you gotta think the game lightning fast. What's the best road trip that you've been on so far? Oh man, that's a tough choice. We've had some good ones. Uh, I'm jealous. The Arizona State one was nice recently, just to get out of the cold here, yeah. uh, get in the warm weather. But uh, I think I, UConn was probably my favorite. We were there last year. It's pretty, pretty cool arena. Um, the game we played there was student night, so only students in the building, and it was sold out. It was uh, pretty special. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. Well, Caleb, good luck tonight against Fairbanks. I feel a W. It's in the air, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Uh, thanks for having me. Absolutely. That's Caleb Puffman. We'll be back with more Steel Wolf Hockey in just a few moments. Well, if you know the word, sing it at home. Sweet Caroline blaring through the speakers here at the Avis Alaska Sports Complex as you watch some of the highlights from that second period of play. So UAA was supposed to begin this third period with a minute 51 of power play time. However, that scrum at the end of the period resulted in a single penalty, and it was to Riley Thompson. So I'm um, not sure what the officials saw on that play. But uh, yeah, so we're gonna skate four on four to begin said third period. Shots on goal through two periods of play, 22 for Fairbanks, 17 for UAA. Both teams have offers on the power play. They're both 0 for four. And uh, Pierce Charleston, 17 saves. Jared Whale, 20 saves on 22 shots. So we are off and running here in period number three. Long pass ahead, deflected, and McDonald will carry into the zone for the Nanox. Tried to leave a pass off. That didn't connect, but he gets it back after a bad pass from the Seawolves. McDonald still with it. He's watched by Helgeson. Curls away. McDonald hangs on. Now it's Brady Risk. Risk tries to send it down low. That was broken up by Helgeson. Risk had it back, though. Tried to give it off to Israels. Harrison Israels trying to get free. And the puck finally finds its way to UAA stick, and it's deflected deep into the Nanook zone. No icing as we're down to 1907 to play here in period number three. Four on four for another 54 seconds, and then UAF will get a 10-second power play. Shot goes through the top of the blue paint off of Braden Bernie stick back to the point, Bergmanis. 
with the shot. Fairbanks still maintaining that zone time. Puck knocked off the stick of McCauley by Bamber. Now Bamber tied up on the half wall by Matsui. Bamber comes out with the puck as the Seawolves carry ahead. Porter Shackle. Porter blows a tire as the puck rolls behind the Nanook net and Fairbanks is right back out with it. Shot off a Seawolf stick and it's Aiden Weston gives off to Bamber as the last four seconds run off of the Fairbanks penalty. So Fairbanks is now on their power play for the next five seconds. And I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that one's gonna be Ofer as well. I'm right. And Thompson comes back on, that's Johnny Sorensen. Shot goes high, maybe off the shoulder of Jared Whale. Puck kept alive in the zone by the Nanooks. Here's Kozabud, backhands it up the wall, looking for Thompson. Tisdale fires it deep into the Nanook zone. Charleston out of his net to play it. And the puck sent up the wall. Kothi able to swat it back out to the neutral zone. Thompson has it back for the Seawolves. Riley Thompson rims it all the way around. Gomez had it momentarily. Gets some help from Tisdale, who just turns it in on net. And a save made by Pierce Charleston. Well, Mr. Tuttle, let me uh, apologize for our late arrival, but give, we have a goalie assist because the UA assistant Chris Kamal is going to tell me from back there, oh, it's from back down. I go, really? The, that seemed like a pretty <laughs> quick intermission. I fell asleep with the switch there for a moment. So here we are, 240 into the third period. That's all right. It took me about that long to get over the surprise of only Riley Thompson getting a penalty <laughs> at the end of the second period. Chris, like, you got to be out there for the game, right? Like, yeah, I just, like, take a little break and be a little peace quiet. No, it's on. I go, wait, it, the UA game's on? Oh, yeah, all right. Ran out here as fast as I could. You know. Off the draw, Gilson fires one wide of the net. Huffman fires it back in that general direction as well. Pulled away, though, by Fairbanks. Pass sent into the UAA end. Caleb Huffman gets to it and able to get that one through, but not able to get it out of the zone was Gilson. Chance here again for Fairbanks. Rolls off the stick of Kothi. Another, or a shot did come in that time, and that was blockered away by Jared Whale, and the Seawolves will ice the puck. Truth be told, I was just basking in the glow of Michigan back to back to back Big Ten football championship. So I think that's kind of so the big question uh, is who is going to be the fourth team uh, in? I'm going to say it's Alabama because the SEC has to be in there, right? You Shot would think. high over the net, even though Texas beat them. The committee will find a way to make sure everyone keeps jaw jacking for a month. Yes. Yes. Rudsov leaves off for Berg Manis. Circles the net, tries to stuff it. Jared Whale the save, and he oh. got back and got the second one on Brady Risk as well. <laughs> that was even better than what he made late in the second period. The ability to get that right foot back over right on the post. Look here, Dawson Bruneski comes around, tries the wraparound. Jared Whale stuffs him. The puck comes out the other side, so Brady Risk tries it as well. And Jared Whale, he will get nothing and like it. You know, the old proverbial ESPN Sports Center top 10 is probably would finish given the time zone difference. I'm not sure if our YouTube feed would reach them, but that would be a couple nominees for Jared Whale there tonight of those two saves. The one at the end of the second, that one right there. Off the draw, Mitch LaFay comes together with Bergmanis. Puck stays in the Seawolf zone. Trying to force that one out front was Dubois. No luck there, but the Seawolves can't get it out of the zone. Mitch LaFay giving the business to Bergmanis over there. Puck finally does come out of the Seawolf end. LaFay, another hit put on that time on Dubois as the Seawolves get it deep into the Fairbanks end. McDonald backhands it ahead. 
as the Nanix send it deep into the Seawolf zone. Around behind the net it goes. Bamber gets to it along with Matsui. Now McDonald steps in to try to help out, and Bamber's just going to put it off the wall. Helgeson catches up to it. Max walks in, shot saved by Charleston. It's one of the few we've seen this weekend where he's had a hard time maintaining it. The Seawolves still with the puck. Weston centering feed. And it's finally sent out of the zone all the way down the ice it goes. That will be icing. It's nice to see Mitch LaFay out there throwing that 6-6 frame around. 15.05 left here in our third period. Another look here at that opportunity by Max Helgeson. And Charleston with the answer once again. Both LaFay and Ben Anderson were bodying up some people on that last exchange right there. Got a penalty coming up on the Seawolves. Across the blue line go the Nanox. They just send it in deep. That'll be touched up. And that's going to be a cross check. And that's going to be Porter Shackle. That was called by the official that was standing all the way at the UAA blue line when that cross check happened all the way down, almost behind the net of uh, Pierce Charleston. 5.08 the time of the call. Porter Shackle didn't shy away from a few friendly words being used on his way to the penalty box. Emphasis on the F in friendly. L for love, right? Puck sent back up the wall. C.J. Lloyd cross eyes to Bergmanis. Down low. Back to Bergmanis. Fakes the shot. Tries to go to Rubstov. He gets tied up. And then Connor Merritt will send that one all the way down the ice. Kill some time for UAA. 30, a minute 32 left here on the shackle penalty. 14-20 left in the third period. Two to nothing. Fairbanks. Roots off, gives off. Now it's Harrison Israels. Tried to go back to Roots off. That was broken up. Now it comes back to Bergmanis at the point. And the Seawolves now. Gomez, a chance to skate it. And he's got some room. He's going to take it. Shot saved by Charleston. Gomez still in the rebound, still there. And a save by Charleston. Oh, Riley Thompson surprised if he doesn't <laughs> get a penalty on that because the guy fell down. Riley Thompson taking a nook off the tweet. That's uh, Harrison Israels. And I think Riley was in a position to say, I'm wel I welcome your retaliation the way he was thin and well, tall I mean, near the blue paint. That's what happened to Riley at the end of the second period. He ended up in the penalty box for it. So off the draw, Pucks finally pulled out of the circle by the Nanix. 50 seconds left on the shackle penalty. McDonald right up the middle. Matt Kanash rubs him out of the play. But right back in now is Matt Suey. Cross ice nice with look. the pass. Shot saved by Jared Whale. Nice job to be able to find that through the bodies that were in front of him. McDonald has it tied up on the half wall just inside the blue line. Puck finally comes out, and it's sent all the way down by Gunnar Van Dam. McDonald to Sorensen, back to McDonald, and he'll carry through center ice. Puck knocked off his stick. Now it's a chance for Tisdale as that puck lay there. Tisdale, shot saved by Charleston. And now the Nanix try to come out, but again, they mishandle. Power play is over. Gaffney with it. A shot saved by Whale. That was a little bit of a change up there. Nanix able to keep the zone. Back to the point it goes, it's Jean-Louis. Shot comes in, goes wide of the net. Kothi steps in to keep that alive. And he digs it out behind the net before Caleb Huffman can tie him up. And now it's Tisdale. Tries to go cross ice with the pass, looking for Shackle. That didn't connect. And then the puck chips up into the protective netting. So UAS penalty kill tonight. Five for five. That's something. Yes. 
Scratch. <coughs> Scratch that. Six for six. I forgot about that 10 second power play that Fairbanks had. Nanix control off the draw, and the puck is backhanded up into their bench by Brady Risk. You know, Aiden Weston trying to make his way to open ice, had his pocket picked. And we've got a whistle for offsides. Local official Travis Jackson with that call on the offsides. Play coming out to the neutral zone. McDonald off the faceoff, sends it deep into the Seawolf end. Shot off Ribsoff's stick, save main, and it's chipped out by UAA. Here's Almquist, takes that into the corner, runs into a pair of Nanook defenders. Helgeson trying to catch up to that. Can't clear the zone, can the Nanooks, and it's kept alive by UAA. Aiden Weston outmuscled for that puck, and the Nanooks send that one all the way down. Icing is waved off as Carson Kozabud gets to it. He's run into over there by Kate Nielsen. Puck comes out. Shot taken by Bernie. That's it. Hits a leg on the way through. Puck chopped off McCauley's stick and the Seawolves back out into the neutral zone with Almquist. He's just going to send it deep as he was late in a shift. The Nanics start back up the left side. Bergmanis just chipping it deep into the Seawolf end. Gunnar Van Dam to Mitch LaFay. Kanash is going to help out and get that puck out of the zone. Bergmanis reels it in for the Nanooks. And now it's Bamber. Turns and lets one rip deep into the Nanooks end. And it comes right back out into the neutral zone. Bamber with it once again. Get it ahead to Anderson. Kanash knocks it off a stick. Back to Gunnar Van Dam. Trying to find himself a shooting lane. Van Dam hangs on. Goes down low. No penalty. Oh, there is a penalty going to be called. And there's our whistle. And Mr. Anderson and LaFay down near Charleston's net. So this should be a Seawolf power play. Kate Nielsen heading to the box for UAF. Elbow. So Nielsen two for elbowing at 9.43. And that'll put UAA on their sixth power play of the night. Off the draw, it's under a body in the circle. And the Nanix pull it out. Send that one out through the neutral zone. Caleb Huffman will turn it back ahead now for the Seawolves. Huffman's still with it. As he takes it into the corner, goes behind the net with it. Pass gets away from Merritt, but Kozabud keeps it alive. TJ Lloyd has it now. Back. Puts it off the wall, and that one eludes Kozabud, and it's back into the Seawolf end. Huffman. Kozabud. And Connor Merritt will send that one in behind the Natick net. Rimmed around, kept alive by Matt Allen. Now it's Almquist. Goes back to Bamber. Cross ice feed to Almquist. Bamber lets it rip. Save made by Charleston. The rebound was there. But the Nanix able to clear that one all the way down the ice. Minute three to go in Seawolf's power play. 9.15 to go here in our third period. 2-0 Nanix continue to lead. Here's Gilson. 
fires that one in, around the net it goes. Charleston tried to stop it up, and the Nanix can't clear the zone. Helgeson hangs on. He's gonna go behind the net. Lost control of it momentarily, got it back and got it back to Bamber. Gilson to, or Bamber to Helgeson. Bamber to Gilson. Cross-eyes feed, looking for Helgeson. Max didn't see it coming. Gilson once again, down low with it to Thompson. Tried to go between the legs, that didn't work out too well. And it's sent all the way down the ice once again. Jared Whale trying to jumpstart one last rush. Gilson fires it deep into the Nanak zone. Kept alive by Osborne, at least for a second. Now the Nanics are gonna be able to carry ahead. Nice flop at the blue line, and that's gonna draw a penalty. So well done by Berneski. Given his best Michael Phelps impression. <laughs> Let's take a break. With that, we'll you beat be right me to back it, Dave. for some com after a couple commercials. Growing up Alaskan makes you, well, a little different. We're an independent bunch, yet we can't get along without each other. We like unique things, and we have unique needs. That's the whole reason we created Club 49, the only travel benefits program made for Alaskans. So you can be you. Alaska Airlines Club 49. When ConocoPhillips began working in Alaska more than a half century ago, one of the cornerstones of our operation was to provide real assistance for the institutions that help our state thrive. And today, as Alaska's leader in responsible resource development, ConocoPhillips Alaska is proud to continue the support for the University of Alaska Foundation and Alaska's scholars that we began in 1979. ConocoPhillips Alaska, unlocking Alaska's energy resources. And here we are, back at the Avis Alaska Sports Complex. Fairbanks will begin their seventh power play of the night. Well, if it's any consolation, it has been a great day around UAA because both basketball teams lost on Seattle earlier, so. TJ Lloyd sends it deep into the Seawolf zone. Tried to center that pass out front back to Lloyd. That's broken up, and the Seawolves come ahead. Gomez got it through or to Almquist. Almquist couldn't handle the pass, and it's coming back out the other side with Bergmanis. Bergmanis has it taken away from him by Merritt, and he will just send it right back in to the Nanug zone. Bergmanis carries ahead, gives off as Harrison Israels crosses the Seawolf blue line. His pass attempt is broken up and Riley Thompson will skate it out for the Seawolves. Gomez with a shot and a good save there by Pierce Charleston. And we've got penalties coming up. The loudest we've heard the crowd all weekend as that kills off UAA or UAF's seventh power play. 12.37, a holding call. So four on four play adds a little bit different component here as we enter the latter stages of the third period. Bergmanis for holding at 12.37. So we'll play four on four for a minute seven, and UAA will get some power play time, hopefully. Gilson, shot, save. Ball. Rebound was there, and Charleston did finally find it. UAA That's only happened, shots a, on goal. only happened a few times with both goaltenders where they've left any kind of discernible rebound. Sitting there for... A second or two. Shots a goal unofficially at 28 apiece. And 
And I'll getting thrown out of the faceoff circle. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to check my notes, but you don't get awarded anything for style points or, or out of kids or anything. But at least UA played a, a little bit better, noticeably better. Yeah, yeah. That jump in the first period was, was interesting. Puck backhanded across the Seawolf blue line, and it's sent right back out of the zone. It's going to roll all the way down on Charleston. Adam Tisdale nearly beat the Fairbanks defender to the Fairbanks net. Carson Kozabud steps in to keep that alive. Centering pass out front, but nobody home for UAA. Pass sent up the wall, kept in by Van Dam. Now it's Kozabud. Skates the blue line, throws one into the glove of Pierce Charleston. He'll hold on. And the Seawolves will be on the power play here in 14 seconds, barring any penalty calls. Off the draw. Gilson tries to get it to Bamber, who goes down low with it. There's Thompson, tries to force his way out front. Seawolves are on the power play as Helgeson is out. Save made, rebound is still there. And it's finally cleared out by the Nanook. Still in the zone, though. Here's Helgeson, shot, he scores! Power, play, goal! for the Seawolves. Max Helgeson at 13.54. Goes high glove to dent the scoreboard. Not sure what it said on FanDuel or DraftKings, but if my math's correct, that breaks UA's scoreless streak at 193 minutes and 30 seconds since Ouch. Gunnar Van Dam scored in Madison and last Friday, week ago Friday. So again, if nothing else, something to build on, but we got six minutes left and it's a one goal game. Here we go, strap in everyone. It's the Seawolf's second goal in the last five games. And it couldn't have been more timely. Now the Nanooks look to counter. Shot goes wide of the net. And it's behind the Seawolf net. Gunnar Van Dam wrapped up with one of the Nanook players. Now it's Kothi. He leaves off for McCauley. McCauley has it knocked off his stick. And then Matsui tries to throw it out in front. Puck laying there, dangerously shot off the crossbar, and then it's put up into the protective netting. Peyton Matsui. Well, that was awfully close, the crossbar there. Yes. UA goal line, Max Ellis is his eighth of the season with assist for Brett Bamber and William Gilson. Again, snapping that goal of streak. According to my math, which is always suspect, at 193 minutes at 30 seconds of play, it's a long time. Since Gunnar Van Dam scored with a minute 34 remaining in the second period in Madison a week ago and change. Gilson up the right wing side. Sends it deep into the Nanak zone. TJ Lloyd gets to it, rims it up the wall. And the Nanak's able to get it back out into the neutral zone. Aiden Weston sends it back across the Nanak blue line. Matt Johnson. Throws it towards the front of the net. Cut off before it gets there. Gilson knocks it down. Trying to get away from Rubsov. Shot rolls in on net. Charleston with that save. And it's flipped all the way down the ice. Gilson be the first one on it. And now Carson Kozabud. Pass sent ahead, Aiden Weston couldn't quite catch up to that one as the Nanix will come back the other way. Pass broken up by Brett Bamber. Puck sent back into the Nanix zone with 4.20 to go in the third period. 
Broughton Sabo sends it all the way down. That hits traffic. And it's Bamber. Couldn't control the, the pass. Aaron Holtz turns it right back in for Fairbanks. Caleb Huffman behind his own net. Gives off to Gomez. His pass ahead to Tisdale. They're going to say that was touched, so icing is waved off. And Riley Thompson had it for a moment for the net Seawolves behind the net. Gomez down there trying to help out. Thompson pulls it out, and it's out loose in skates. Who's going to pull it free? Finally comes out on a Nanook stick, and Fairbanks hits the ice or hits the blue line two on two. Jared Whale blockers that one aside. Gomez pass ahead to Allen. That was deflected, and Matt Allen, shot goes off the side of the net. UA's at a good little way right now, but it's worth watching Jared well to see how early he might come to the bench for that extra attacker. Definitely. Seawolves cross the Nanak blue line once again. Centering feed, Matt Allen fanned on it. He had a lot of net right there if he could have made contact with that puck. Back out in the neutral zone, Almquist gives back to Huffman. Cross ice feed to Kozabud. He's going to send that in right on net. Charleston will leave that off, and it's sent up into the protective netting with 2.48 to go in our third period. Nanix not able to change. Seawolves are able to change. Gilson, Bamber, Helgeson. I mean, you are seeing teams at every level, especially in the NHL these days, pull their goalie extra early. Yeah. Uh, it's a consideration here for UAA. I think so. Gilson throws one in wide of the net. Helgeson trying to catch up to that one, but the Nanix able to get it out. They're going to go for a quick change as the Seawolves try to counter quickly. Thompson gets it up to Helgeson, who gets it into the Nanix zone. Two and a half to go, third period. Cross ice pass kept alive nicely by Bamber. Here he comes, here he comes. Jared Whale here he comes. on his way to the net, or on his way to the bench. Out with 2.23 left to play. Puck tied up in oh. that corner. And Fairbanks a chance to skate it out. And it's sent all the way down. It's not going to be on net. Gilson will start it up for the Seawolves. And that's going to be down all the way for icing in... Yeah, I don't think it really matters that Ben Elmquist was kind of beat on that far side. So Jared Wells is going to check back in between the pipes. Minute 56 left here in this one. Fairbanks on top, 2-1. to one. And... Seawolf's trying to get the players that were on the ice back on the ice. Off the draw, Brady Risk had it and then lost it. And then Helgeson, cross ice, looking for Tisdale. Here comes Jared, Gets coming it. off again. Deep into the zone. Caleb Huffman steps in to try and keep that alive. And it's chipped back up into the netting by Fairbanks. And the faceoff will come inside the UAF zone to the left of goaltender Pierce Charleston. 33 saves tonight by him. And UA we're gonna catching have a some breaks and a timeout coming here from Matt Shasby. Give everyone a chance to catch their breath. David Tuttle as well. Yes, please. To get a minute 37 remaining in the third period again. After tonight's game, UAA. Heads off to Massachusetts to play the Minutemen in Amherst next weekend and then enjoy their holiday break. We'll see them again here at the Avis Alaska Complex. Not until February 3rd when they again play these very same UAF Nooks for a single game. Before that, I have to go down to Seattle to watch the Winter Classic. I'm heading down there in February when the Red Wings play the Kraken on President's Day, that Monday. I'll be in Las Vegas because my daughter has a tournament there. Rice. 
And I get to see the Red Wings and Predators in Detroit, of all places, over leaving here on Christmas night to finally visit family back in Michigan. Looking forward to that. Again, not a whole lot of talking going on that timeout. I think the message was quickly delivered. So we have Merritt, Tisdale, Almquist, Helgeson, Gilson, and Bamber coming out for UAA. Draw to Charleston's left. And we've got Kathy Bethard leading the cheers. I love it. The true MVP of UA hockey. Absolutely. So TJ Lloyd gets sent off the ice. Off the draw. Puck just tied up in that near side corner. Finally comes out on a Fairbank stick. Kept alive in the zone though by Gilson. Helgeson tries to drop a pass back. That didn't connect. Gilson cross ice to Bamber. Back to Gilson. Didn't handle it cleanly. Almquist. Gilson. Bamber to Helgeson. Oh. Cross ice feed to Almquist. He was right there. Almquist though. Couldn't get a piece of it, and that is going to go just wide oh, of the net. Brett Bamber nearly knocked Ooh. the net off, which caused a faceoff in that zone. That was a nifty move by Bamber to keep the net from going off its yeah. moorings. 45 seconds to go here in our third period. Maddox trying to get it out of their own end, not able to do so there. Helgeson keeps it alive. Tisdale. Hangs on, centers it out, or tries to center it out in front, ends up going behind the net. Almquist gets it down to Riley Thompson, who forces it out in front. Almquist with it again, 23 seconds to go here in the third. Puck finally comes out. All the way around the boards, not able to keep that in, and that's gonna turn into an empty net goal for Fairbanks. Kate Aaron Holtz gonna pick up his third goal of the season. Transfer from Colorado College. So three to one. Nanix on top with 9.3 to go here in the third period. Well, UA created that drama. Grabbed everyone's attention for several minutes. That's definitely the first time this weekend the fans have had anything to get up and get excited about. Matt Shazby still down there chatting with uh, one of the referees. So we'll have a drop of the puck and that'll be about it. Puck rolls deep into the Seawolf zone. Max Osborne throws it up the wall to Mitch LaFay. And that is it. So Fairbanks picks up the W tonight. Three to one the final score, but credit UAA because of the game that they played tonight, a way to rebound after that game last night. Well, David, the truth obviously hurts here. I mean, there's no sugar recording. You've lost 10 games to your rival. But again, this is a different kind of rivalry because these teams need each other in the, in just to even exist. And anyone who says otherwise is not paying close enough attention. So that adds a little bit different element to this. But the Governor's Cup is currently lives in Fairbanks, and it's going to stay there. But again, UA found something we could build on as it heads off to Massachusetts because I know just Matt Chasby and I talking before the game tonight before we recorded our chat about this team being a little gassed and a little bit on just because of the number of games it's played and the traveling it's done. It's no excuse. That's what this team's going to do if it's, if it's a team in Alaska. It's got to put, put on airline miles and all that sort of thing. But And as regardless, long as you're playing that independent schedule, you've got to take the games that – that you can, and a lot of those are on the East Coast this year, so. Didn't have as severe a travel schedule as they did 
or I should say last years. year, they didn't have as severe a travel schedule as they have this year. Yeah, but that's part of the fun of the experience, too, if you want to start. You're not even worried about wins and losses and goals against and all that sort of thing. But, I mean, the idea, I get to play college hockey for a couple of years and then visit all these places. It's about as good as it gets oh, for no uh, doubt. being in my early 20s and whatnot. So, okay, congratulations to UAF. So but every week's an adventure with this UAA team, so it'll be very interesting to see what happens when they head to Amherst. I mean, will we see another game like we saw in Madison, Wisconsin a couple weeks ago? Will we saw another game like we saw in Happy Valley at absolutely. Penn State a couple weeks ago? And it's not the same Minutemen team as it was a few years ago when they won the national championship and when Kale McCarr was there. They've, they've come back down to earth a little bit from where they were, but still having to make that road trip back there. There's not a Hockey East team that you can say is terrible. Um, so it's it's going to make the Seawolves work, and uh, hopefully they can come out of that with a W, at least one W going into Christmas. You know, and, and again, my early sit down with Matt Chasby, he was interested to watch that Michigan Iowa yep. game with me a few minutes before this game tonight. Uh, he talked about kind of the what's left on their schedule. He talked about 14 games remaining or whatever that number is, and if they can get X, Y, or Z. I won't say what number he said, but he had kind of a realistic take on what would be the expectation or what would be something to really hold your hat upon and so you know it's all there for but to the, you know if they get to what that number would be and they can win 10 11 12 games yep then you know does the governor's cup really matter in the grand scheme of things i would probably say no yeah i don't think so right now because if we look at their schedule they have umass obviously we've said that next week they come back home after the holiday break or actually they go to fairbanks after the holiday break and then they go to providence so after that providence series you have one game left with Fairbanks, and then you're playing all the new schools. Well, sorry, Long which Island, are in Stonio, a lot of the similar Augustana. situation that UA is in. So, you know, again, I, I, whether it's week to week, whatever you want to say, this team is, you know, obviously probably not getting an NCAA berth anytime soon. But let's just build on little small things. Tonight was a much better effort from top to bottom. There were some few spotty spots there. For, but uh, in terms of what happened Friday versus what happened tonight, get a goal, break that scoreless streak, which, again, I don't care who you are, how cool you want to act. That's going to make you feel a lot better. You're going to sleep a lot better tonight for UA. Thanks to that one goal, just to make a little bit of difference. Obviously, they have a lot of work to do, a lot more things to do before they can really impress anyone, but it's all right there for them. But, uh, you know, tonight compared to last night, night and day difference. Like we said earlier, tonight's game was at least entertaining. Uh, it was fun to watch. There was a little bit of drama at the end. Last night, none of that existed. It wasn't fun to watch. There was no drama. And fortunately, it ended. So final shots on goal tonight, 34-30 to 30 in favor of the Seawolves. Unfortunately, Fairbanks with the W. The one game we had prior to the holiday break, I wore the outfit just to say that. So happy holidays to all everybody who watches, everybody associated with UA Hockey. I really appreciate this opportunity, and we'll see you in February. Safe holidays to everyone as well. Happy holidays, and uh, we'll see you uh, next year. Good night. Create a backyard that's out of this world. Right now, get a free carrying case, chain, and hat with the purchase of select steel chainsaws. Real steel. Find yours.